<laughs> Welcome back to your attention, although you haven't gone anywhere. You <laughs> will with your child, eh? <laughs> so, so, so we got a little time. I will just say a little bit, a few words before I take some questions. And that is that how this deluded uh, perception is, if un unless recognized, become habituated, karmic perception. And we become so habituated in a pattern that we do not have any alternative. We don't even think it's necessary. And it just completely, completely control us unconsciously. So, but that which is habitual, even positive, being positive, being conscious is also a habit. You can, you can form a new habit. You can, you can form a new habit. Don't just say that it didn't exist before, you can't have it. You know, when you didn't know how to speak Russian, you went to school in learned Russian. Yeah, you should speak Russian still. You can talk to Putin, it changes <laughs> You have to talk to the Putin in you to change your mind. So easy to become Putin. So, deliberately driven. <laughs> but if you know how to become aware of that, the habit is also changing. I'm sure quite a few of you would have have certain habits in the past that as you learn to know how unhealthy, how destructive, how uh, un unbeneficial it is to you and you, when you stood up and took up to break the habit, you have become afraid of that habit. So even karmic habits are changeable. You know, karma doesn't mean permanent. Even karma is impermanent. We can change that. So therefore, you just have to make time with yourself to be conscious. Usually people are never making time to be themselves. They're always trying to be with somebody else. Time to go somewhere, to be with someone. Goes. They're not making time to be with themselves. So you have to start making time to be mindful, to be conscious, to be thankful, to be kind. <laughs> Really sit there and count all the blessings, and then you will you will start shifting. Because most people have habits of not doing that. They always be listing all the things that are going well in their life, and then they are this angry, and then stay like that. They're not willing to do anything. Think that I can do this. I have the freedom to do this. I have the capacity to do this. If I do this, it will help others. Otherwise, everybody is not want to do anything. Who will do this? I shouldn't do that. And then you start forming a new positive habit, you know? And don't be this minimalist. Oh, I don't want to do this. And then you never form a positive habit. Because, and the negative habit is continuously happening. It's very reliable. You know? Negative habit is not worry anywhere. It's flowing all the time, since the time of worry. <laughs> you know, you don't have to create a new river. You just have to irrigate the water from that same river into a different grass. Do you see in the old, in kind of old kind of fashioned villages, you see how they irrigate? Irrigating from the river. You know? And the, the, the water they bring from the river to the, to the field is actually making the crops grow up there. Before they knew how to irrigate, they, the land was parched, wasn't doing anything. So once you start irrigating, bringing water into your life, water of my hands, put the tap on. There's no water there, because you only the pipes are off. <laughs> Sometimes, in some places, they got only two hours water. But next time there's no water in the pipe, then you can't use the water. But in Australia, all the time. When did it happen? Only 200 years ago. There wasn't running water in the So it was a 
happen. You have to change. Likewise, we should start to join the pipeline into your home of mindfulness and try to switch on. Try to make it happen. How can I reach that? You will learn to how to be mindful. Learn to be how to be conscious and to be useful and, and productive, effective community. Some of you do it that in your community. Not necessarily is that there's, you know, work capacities you are constantly, you know, contributing. If you're contributing for something for five years, ten years, you will see the proof of benefit of it. In 20 years' time, you'll see. But you have not want to do anything yet, you want to see the result. You want others to do it. Do it for you. This mind cannot be put in someone's garage and get fixed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way to fix the garage to put part your mind there. Has to be has to be fixed by ourselves through our own self-discipline and good companionship. A little bit each day, a little bit, and then you will see a kind of a shift happening. Your senses are much more able. You're sensible. You have breaking habits. Some things you do, some things you eat or drink too much or whatever, you will stop. You will become slowly reduce, drop those habits. And you become much more subjectively conscious how you can have this view of our mind. Mother or father in law, sister or and you know, one of these. This is so unhealthy to for me to believe this view and think it's due to them. I have a right to be angry. This is ridiculous under And then start listening to your things. How you want to correct who you might ask. Okay, so with this I would like to open it for your questions or comments. Thank you everybody. Karma didn't happen how we can in Chakama's uh, impermanence. But sometimes you, you read texts or whatever and they describe karma as being sort of um, going back many lifetimes or it's perpetuating up the life and like um, if 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 we if, Create a karma in previous lifetimes, you know, and how can it be? It, it won't come to, uh, won't be resolved until, you know, we can correct it sort of thing. That, that's the way it works. Or it, 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 it. Yeah, there, there are some, some unpaid debts it has earned so much interest, much more than the capital <laughs> that you should have paid. <laughs> So all the unpurified karma, unhandled karma of the past, sort of, sort of, you know, escalates and grows. But that also is, it's impermanent. Because of the impermanent, the karma is growing back, back to worse. But if we were to take action right now, I would accept those as my past actions, unpurified actions. Then we have to at least start to accept that these are the consequences of our deeds, and then not belting yourself or anyone for that matter, but start being kind to yourself. So when you start being kind to yourself, then you're not putting yourself against the karma. You're accepting the karma. Accepting the karma doesn't mean that you will start with it. You will just start to change your attitude about it. The attitude. Attitudinal karma is harder to change. If attitudinal karma is changed, then physical, maybe some people who have lots of illnesses because they harmed other living beings, they killed, they fished, you know, they did all these and that and the past, therefore, the person is born with lots of physical ailments. Maybe you know, many, many major physical ailments are uh, there as well, or once injury, harm, or killing that one has caused other human beings. So you believe in that, and therefore, 
you start accepting, I have to accept my inner conflict, as in whatever it is, but I start now being kind to those beings who are injured. Not think of my illness, but who are more, more injured than they are, and start showing kindness to them. Then you don't have time to, you're not exacerbating your karma, so called karma, as then. Your own karma is now understood by you. You're doing something about it. You're now showing kind, you're feeding some hungry animals or others somewhere you are sponsoring somebody maybe, sending twenty dollars a month. And so a lot of people do that. Do those kind of You know, you're not you're not sitting on the negative crowd. You're actually purifying the negativities by the positivities. Not so much that you don't suffer, but because you are making other people's suffering to be a little bit kind of soothed by your kindness. Because of that you understand karma, because of that you realize instead of thinking of my pain or my illness, think of others who are worse off than you and start doing something with them. And then, during that time, you don't have the time to suffer. You don't have time to suffer because you are not causing it. You are not causing it. But when you do something useful, almost like you, you know, almost like you look as if you don't have the same karma because you don't. Karma means action. Actions are three kinds, physical, deeds, verbal sayings, and mental thoughts. You're not, you're not posting and posting their negative thoughts. Because you're not karma in the thought karma. Because you're not creating the thought karma. Maybe you're doing something useful, maybe you're breathing meditation. You know, you're trying to distract yourself from poor me mentality. And that distracting yourself is post karma. So that's why meditation has a lot of help and conduct emotional, spiritual, personal benefit because it actually distracts you from sitting on your afflictions and suffering, poor me, why did I do this? And then, then developing even more anguish and sadness and hate and, and so on. So you want to actually do something positive karma. So get out and do things positive. And that alone will kill time. And you would be totally distracted. So get out and do things useful. Others need you. You think what you're doing is not good enough. Some people value you more than you think. So always have a little bit of passion, a little bit of vision that if I do this, he will do this, he will benefit others. Why should I be always lazy? Think it's a bit too much. And then when people are mostly, mostly inactive, that's when they suffer. When they're active, busy keeping your brain and mind, time, busy full of good, good things in the society, community, and then you are appreciated. When you know people appreciate you, you wouldn't believe how much purpose there is for you to be alive. When you always goes into yourself, doing very little, nothing, always needing other people's attention to you, and doing that, giving hardly anything, contributing hardly anything, that's when people are dying. It's a life of flowers. You need to stay active, you need to grow them, you need to water them, you need to you know, keep them from dangers and let that go. <laughs> so inactivity is, is, is passive power. We have positive power, ne neutral, negative power, and passive or neutral power. Lots of people are wasting time in neutral power. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want to do leadership. They do take responsibilities. Particularly that what needs, needs to be taken care of. And so when it comes to negative, it happens automatically. <laughs> positive, it did not come arm twisting. It did not of positive influences from others to do or your own initiative. Neutral, lots of the time we spend doing nothing useful. So that's why actually 
karma is action and a consequence, a law of consequence. Karma shouldn't be thought as a fate. Karma is law of consequences. Don't talk about, don't use the word karma very often. You know, if you want to secularize Buddhism, <laughs> talk about the law of consequences. Law of consequences. Yeah, there are consequences. <laughs> consequences and consequences. <laughs> and it's perpetuates. And you, if you take this turn, if you take this action, the consequences will be is reduced. You say sorry to somebody, you forgive others quickly, the consequences of you forgiving somebody, you wouldn't have it it had that much benefit. But it took so long for you to do that. So delighted in ignorance. So therefore, don't delay forgiveness and pardoning others, thanking others, and don't delay your doing good to help others. Don't think I want you now. Where do you have them? Positive needs need, need to be taken initiatives. Buddha, when he was 25, 90 years old, he can he cannot. We don't want to spend another month, another year in that palace, thinking of his power. He's king, but king of what? King of delusion. He doesn't want to be another king of delusion. There's so many kings in the Shakya kingdom that is all deluded. <laughs> the list of deluded kings. <laughs> And there would be more list of deluded kings out there if he if he could. And he wanted to change that. Now all the other Shakya kings, do you remember? Ah, you not remember anybody can't Shakya kings. But only one name of Shakya King remember is his father. Why? Because we son. <laughs> Look at the consequence. No. 2,600 years later, world population travel to go to the where would the walk out. Yeah, he came out to the inside. Not only that place, but wherever he went. People travel in 6th century, 2nd century in China, in search of where the Buddha was born, what he did. And every single soil, piece of soil they take home and give to the fellow believers out of such a spread of devotion. Why? Because he walked out. So, he realized that the time is short and cannot sit still and do nothing, <clears throat> but rather make, make a change and never make it into to that. And so this kind of <coughs> realization is to negotiate our, our, our idleness, not to let the idleness and inactivity to take over as it has, but see the urgency to, to take some initiatives before we actually die. And which chances of being human again, probably not that great. Chances of being some not so fortunate human beings are very Because there are any consequences of what we do. <laughs> so therefore, <laughs> you know, one becomes much more thoughtful how what, what is our living <laughs> and what is part of living consciously and not to live like that anymore. Then the time we may have spent unconsciously. And that kind of action is a consequence, is, is aware of the consequences. If I didn't do anything now, it would have any more severe consequences. At least from now onwards, I, I wouldn't be regretting that I didn't do anything. So this kind of presence, this kind of present, you need to find in you. And this, you don't have to do necessarily religiously. You don't necessarily have to do a formula. You just try to be present. Come back to your breath. You know, sit still. Be thankful. And try to be useful in your thoughts, in your emotions, 
and most importantly, in the, what you say, what you do. Because everybody is so dependent on what you say, if you say positive. If you say anything, you wouldn't believe how vulnerable the people are. Could you just completely go out and do it? Could you win your negative thoughts, negative conversation? How poisonous, how distracted they are. If only half of us are friends, you can completely divide them into two in no time and cause huge rift and suffering. Only one can say the right thing, you know, thoughtfully, rightly, wisely, you can solve this character. So we all, we have great responsibility to be alive and to be responsible. Of course, until we become conscientious, we have to know the consequences of the unconsciousness of the past that we can recognize. We cannot force people to recognize what they can't recognize. At least try to recognize some and say, oh, that's my own part. My, my enmity making enemy. Oh, really? It's not enemy? I don't think so. If you don't think that enmity is not enemy, We wish you didn't see it there. But when you have enmity, that's exactly what that is. Not only that person, but they will be everywhere. The multiply. Then, to put it in you, we think all the Western nations are your enemy. compassion for him and his people. It's not easy to find ourselves. They don't want to. Who would send all the young men and women in the foreign land who was ready to shoot at them if you would attend them? If they're not doubly deluded. And that's what it is. And that's the trillion of war. That's the trillion of war out there. But individuals are creating such wars in their own mind, by holding the same enmity, and then revenge, and paranoia, and this is causing the war. The war is a big word, big word for violence. The violence is a Usually, not just physical violence, not just physical violence or verbal abuse, but empty. The ill will. Ill will is seed of violence. Ill will is seed of war. So, until we can approve that seed, we are at a war. We may not like war out there. But wait a minute, see if there's any war in there in you. So pray to not to go to bed with any enmity towards anyone. And if there is, you just got to pray of it. And why not to wake up with that And replace that with forgiveness, kindness, understanding. But then you have friends that are good see. In my day, you wanted to wake up. Because you wouldn't have woken up. <laughs> Otherwise, you still sleep. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah? Before, before the 
Here, there's two levels. Outwardly, it may not, it may not be warranted for us to be get um, involved um, because it will burn your fingers. But if you don't, you feel guilty that you didn't get involved. Outwardly, there's always this duality. But deep in your heart, you've got to have a totally different interpretation. If you don't have these two levels interpreted, you will be consumed by the expectation of for public self and social self that you want to seem to be doing this and not ignoring this with them. But you're not ignoring them deep down. Buddha thought, people thought Buddha was negligent when he left home, when he went to forest and seek enlightenment. They thought he was just irresponsible for his family and for his subjects and so on. But what did he do? He didn't mind it. He, he wore all the blanks. He was willing to wear the blanks. He was daring to wear the blanks. But deep down, every step he took to get out of the past was for the very benefit of those very people whose well-being was unserved if he remained as a king to the life of the deluded multitude. The deluded multitude like him to stay at the king. And there was no way who wanted him to leave the palace. He was alone. Would he not feel lonely? No, he said, let me have that resilience and courage to be different <laughs> and wear the, wear the blanks, but yet constructed to the real cause of humanity. Maybe the first five, six, ten, and even twenty years from here on, I will be completely blank, thought that I was inactive, I was not contributing, I was not taking responsibility, but way much larger. I win the nectar. And then, then it will be given a gift that excels all gifts. Yes, within six years. He changed all the views of everyone. Who thought he would fail them? Who thought that he failed them as a father, as a king, whatever. But he completely returned transformed as a life. And did he only benefit the people of his, his time? No, he's benefiting even today. So we have to have such reason. We don't mind the temporary blames, misunderstanding, blaming, all these things are completely missing all of them. All the blaming is completely deluded action. <laughs> Even if you didn't do any wrong, people would blame. Mm -hmm. If you have been unconscious, of course you would not. Of course I'm just, just equally deluded. So it's no, it's just a matter of the deluded if blame is deluded. Yes, thank you. I, I have just admitted that myself, by the way. Thank you. Please, please blame me more. Because I don't get enough these blamers. That's the problem. You know? I'm always looking for compliments. That's the problem, you know. <laughs> See? People are looking for compliments. Do you do You should look for criticism. Blames. Really good for you. <laughs> and, for the, and growth for your spirit. It really is. It really is. If you haven't received blame, that's the problem. You know, all that got all the ticks, everybody plays nice and says, this is the problem. You haven't gone the real battle. So, criticism, blaming, accusation, misunderstanding, totally they're misunderstanding, but still it's good for you. This is, this is real awakening. If we can to call it that, there's a deluded perception of theirs. Doesn't mean you have no share of mistakes. You have tons. So what they're, what they're blaming is nothing but the tip of the <laughs> Very really good. This is the subject of Sunday's teaching. My training that you truly try to witness this. 
You have to take a mind of extraordinary that sees this mind and nurture it. Not the human mind can nurture this mind. No friends, no multitude of friends can help you. That's why the Shakyamuni Buddha chose the loneliest path to seek forests and such. He faced the demon of his own. Discipline, solitude, and lack of companions, and nothing to do with anybody. No activity, no commitment to you, no commitment to fight by you. Just totally free to face the naked self and its inconsistency. That's the retreat. That's the work done. That works really well. Why would this go retreat? To treat that, to treat that person in you, the person in you, to treat that, to get well. It's not a retreat where you feel comfortable and you know steam bath in the morning, nicely delivered. That's not a retreat. That's not a retreat. People get the wrong idea about the retreat. <laughs> yeah. The, the, when you accept the blame, you understand the cause of suffering is not wanting to be blamed. If the cause of suffering is not wanting to be blamed, then wanting to be blamed must have some point, some right, some virtue. So as soon as you, you accept blame, you know, as soon as you accept blame, you actually make yourself to look, what did I do? And thanks, it needs to look good and wise to see that. The normal man's eyes won't do. It wouldn't see it. It denies. It straight up denies. Because still eyes are still wax with conjunctive eyes. <laughs> it's painful to open the eye. And you have conjunctive eyes. In both eyes. They are painful. And you have conjunctive eyes. It is worse than that. <clears throat> you know? Most people suffer from this terrible cataract. And being able to accept the blame of others is usually the one who blames to you. They don't do it because they like it. They don't do it because you hate it. They do it because they care. Shatse Kana Tamyan Death in Tibet, he said, one who loves you speaks to God. So, the sign that they love <laughs> not because they hate. That's <laughs> really conscious. If you know that, your number blossom. The one who cares for you most is the most creative of you. You just look at the people in your life who this has been connected to them and to you. It's because they are you. And they have loved you and they still love you. And they can't get you to do the things for them. And they never pray. They have unrealistic expectations. Unconscious expectations. <laughs> or anything like that. But they thought they were good. You will not fail. So this complete miscalculation that put in war. <laughs> complete miscalculation. You have no 
idea what it's like. So, so when somebody blames you, you just see who they are. They were your past loved one, you are not steady loved ones. Still loved ones, they are really hard. They still love you. They need you. Should be kind to yourself and then and accept that. I'm sorry for my share of mistakes. Very good. Wow. You created a new car. <laughs> you, you created a new car to accept the blame. Because it will purify your car. It will humble your ego. It will it will show your humans. So very good. This is the mind training. This is a real mind training. Your mind is thinking now. There's all the cells and tissues talking. Ah, all communities awake. Ah, <laughs> I'm sure they will change it with some kind of blood circulation. Everything will change because you're you are intellectually walking up. Is spiritually formed and spiritually formed. And it is true. Sometimes we raise you, he's having a good clue how to do it. You see, he's like, very good. And better for them. Somebody plays you, you're so kind. You know, they're so kind, but I shouldn't be spoiled by this. So if somebody criticizes you, you're lucky. You're not mm -hmm. you. Somebody praises you, oh, very dangerous. <laughs> very dangerous. Yeah, you may fall into the pit. You may fall into the pit that I'm good. I knew I deserved this. <laughs> some, some other ships also praise me like that. <laughs> See, the elation, the peaking of the arrogance. Very easy. <laughs> Instead of seeing it's kindness of them, it's generous of them. I don't have half the qualities. Um, but they're so kind of me. But they really have no wisdom in offering this praise to me. Because it, it can really make my dull mind to go attached to this praise. See, only dialogue swings from one extreme to another. So the balance <laughs> is very important. When they're happy, they are friends. When they're not happy, they despair. Childish people, and this child shouldn't be entertained. But not reject them. Yeah, don't reject them. That would be arrogant. Still acknowledge is so kind to offer me such prayers when I live in my, you might not say this, deep in my eye, more to all than the living qualities. But that's just so kind. I have to be careful to not let this ego. What are the This is my training. So we are we are able of staying present to think like this. And you will like it if this is happening. You like it if you can. So you're giving praise, you think that's how I'm being kind to somebody. So when you praise someone, you have to look for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So that's why people who love you want praise you. 
they usually speak harsh to you or whatever. So if you are praising somebody, then we have a saying in Tibet, means don't give premature praise, even to one you love. Not because they don't deserve it, not because they wouldn't like it, but they spoil them. <laughs> But instead, you, you, you can, instead you can give them kind of skillful, kind words, you know. Oh, you try your best. You can improve. You can improve on that. Because <laughs> you acknowledge it, they try the best, you know. But you can find it. Let's do it together. To do good, not by giving premature praises or follow flowery words. It's a lot of flowery words. Not <laughs> 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 a superficial smile. Oh, there's no such thing. So we need to be careful. Don't give premature praise. But encouraging them to grow and, and grow and stronger and wise, you can give them some, some constructive suggestion, I call it. Constructive suggestion is expected. But only to, to whom it is a constructive? <laughs> to whom is a constructive suggestion? They can compliment. You know, in Tibetan, we have the same. The others will talk about your fault. You should see what qualities you lack. So let others talk your fault and tolerate that. Then it will give you qualities <laughs> that you lack. And don't, don't talk yourself about your qualities because it wouldn't go well with others. To anyone. <laughs> Why? Because the rivals will think not approve of that. The arrogance will think, oh, you don't deserve this. <laughs> and others will be jealous of you. So there's hardly anybody happy with you, talking good, singing qualities of yourself. <laughs> so only the foolish try to do it. So, it's not a business model, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a business model is some sort of model. <laughs> so, list all the. List. No, no, no. no don't, don't, don't list all the compliments by people. List all the complaints about you. <laughs> this is all the, all the list of people complain about me. So, you watch out for them. Be careful. Be watchful. Be careful. Don't try to harass them. Very good. Because <laughs> then you know, you know they're they are not they are not real. So so don't don't try to put things under the car. Because it will still stay under the car. Not even on the car. So face them. Face them. See what you can turn them into. You can transform them. Be creative, innovative, recycle. Delusions and, and afflictions are not innately bad in themselves. They are they are under as wisdoms. Thank you.